Solid, dude. I'm excited. Yeah, likewise. I'm pumped. I'm pumped to be here. Um, this is like one of the coolest environments that I've been at, you know, lately. Yeah. What, is, what is this? This is your shop? Or what, what do you do here? What is it? Well, I'm one of these, uh, like, visionaries that I live in a space in the future presently. Right. So this place is called, like, the sanctuary, what most people call it, but... It, what I'm building is called Creator's Factory. Creator's Factory. Yeah, it's kind of like the Fantasy Factory, Rob Deerdeck. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we create things. So we have a, a studio room on the yeah. front where we, we print apparel, we, we create custom product. Um, the room we're in right here is called like the War Room where the we war meet. Room? The War Room. The War Room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We you. meet, we mm -hmm. bang out ideas, strategize. And then like right behind us is our boutique where we Sweet. sell product. People come yeah. in, they shop with us. and. It's a whole experience that one day, sometime soon, this will be a much larger yeah, definitely. location called and I can Creators see Factory. Creators Factory. Yeah. yeah. I love it. And I can see that. I can honestly see it. And when you when you see it on social media, you already have like a community. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it feels it feels very, very big. You I know? appreciate it. It feels that. very big. Yeah. So if it feels very big, like in spirit, I could say. Mm. It's definitely growing to that. You know, the body's catching up to it. Mm. So tell us a little bit about you. You know, your name, what do you do? This is the creator's factory. Yeah, yeah. But what is it? Like, how did you how did you start this? Um, what is what is your brand? What are you envisioning? Okay. Um, well, my name is Joseph, and I stumbled into this. I, I've been in fa I've started in fashion as an entrepreneur when I was 14. I was okay. 13 years ago. Yeah. Uh, because of the pandemic, I, from 2018 to early 2020, I did a lot of speaking, so yeah. I was a professional speaker, brand consultant. I've done a lot in, in that space, and right. when the pandemic came and ripped all of my speaking engagements yeah. from my table, I was left with the question of what's next, because yeah. I'm not the type of person that if I lose it all, I go, why did this happen? I go, right. okay, what's next? Exactly. If I can't do A, let me find a better A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not right? even B. Not, Not even, even B. B. It's B. like, what's a better A? Yeah. Right? And, I mean, it took a while. Like, in 2020, I've experimented so many different lanes yeah. that all of them didn't fulfill me because I'm the type of person I've been conditioned to not follow money but follow purpose. Yeah. And the whole 20, like, 2020 there's been many moments of like i feel purpose and then i lose it yeah. because of the shift of everything yeah you in know? person yeah it's yeah, just been pandemic. it's been a big shift so towards the beginning of this year um that's when everything clicked and i said i'm gonna build a brand yeah that is focused primarily on paying homage to creators to yeah. What does it mean to create? What does it mean to bring things to life? Right. You know, because for me, my fashion sense, I've always worn things that meant more than the product to me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You yeah. need to have a meaning of why you're wearing it, why you're ripping it. Yeah, I mean, because the, the thing is, like, I look at, you know, people as we're walking billboards, especially in the space I come from. Yeah. Everything I wear has to mean something mm -hmm. because it's a part of my brand. It's my image. It's my identity. Right. Right. And so, like, I took it took a long time, uh, and I say a long time from the beginning of this year to September of this year. So, like, eight so, nine months. Right. To really create a direction. Yeah. You know, because my thing in business is take your time building something. Yeah. yeah. But go quickly executing the ideas. Okay. So the, the you know. pre-production should take some time. Well, yeah. I mean, like, it took me nine months. Yeah. All, every day. I'm talking, like, every day. A couple hours a day, yeah. yeah putting, uh, you know, all my resources. Yeah. Like, really maximizing for nine months to be at a place where, like, okay, this is the business. Right. This is where we're going to be. And what, know, is it, what is the process of that? You know, those nine months... Well, what, like, you jump into the office, and yeah, I mean, what like, do you do? You immerse yourself into, like, consuming things, or you just literally, like, just innovating? Well, I mean, like, every day is kind of, like, the same. So, like, I'm big on, like, reflecting. So I right. can tell you this, like, 
the beginning of the year, I go, okay, I'm going to build a fashion brand mm -hmm. for creators. In the beginning of the year, the brand was actually called Be All In. Okay. It was about immersing yourself and going all in with the, that and that identity mm -hmm. was always to creators and entrepreneurs and artists and right. go-getters and etc but it was a different name yeah and every day since uh i believe it was march 12th when i started that right right i don't know 2021 this year you got it. yeah and, and so it every day it's like okay first we're building a business so we got to make money mm-hmm so the, the day one was like, okay, what's some quick product I can make to bring in revenue? What can I sell? Right. And then that groomed into, okay, all this product didn't sell. Why didn't it sell? What concepts can I test? What colors can I test? Ordering more garments. Yeah. And, you know, we're printing it ourselves, so we have the luxury of testing, 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 testing. And you print in-house? Yeah, we print, mm -hmm. we print in-house. And so since March to now, like, every day is kind of the same. It's what's working. Right. What's selling? What's not selling? Yeah. How do we make our social media more relatable to who we're trying to target? Who is an influencer in our space that I could get a conversation with? Right. Right. So all of these things are revolving in my mind. I do have a small team. You know, yeah. it's not just me, but the conversations like every day it's about maximizing. So sales, marketing, influence, right. association. Uh, and then looking into the future because, you know, you got to be 10 steps ahead of yourself. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard when you're not like we're still a growing business. You yeah. know, I'm not like at the point where I have the luxury to take a day off. For sure. You're still working. You know, seven. still yeah. work. I mean, I come in here at seven and leave at seven. So, like, how can I maximize this time? So there's so much that goes in my mind. But at the same time, I have to be in the future because. Yeah. If you get consumed with the present as a business owner, your future gets confusing. Right. If you're not planting seeds for the future, like yeah. this is what we're doing here. We're, uh, it's a seed planted for the Definitely. future. Yeah. You know, it's not uh, instant gratification yeah. or I'm going to get an instant result now. Mm -hmm. You know, you're probably going to release this episode weeks later. But right. it's like, what are you doing to also plant seeds in the future? Because exactly. it's so important. So like all of that kind of revolves in my day. Right. And and just thinking about your strategy, you know, with your team and everything. And you guys see obviously like what sells, what doesn't sell. Right. But how do you guys uh, just plan for like continuing, like not just because of numbers. I mean, what is your vision of like, okay, we're trying to launch this product because you're focusing on creators, you know? So what is it, like how are you trying to capture the attention? Because you know the creators mentality you know everyone's already evolving just like you guys are mm. so how are you a step ahead of creators you know like selling I mean, that's, products that they, man, they feel a, comfortable with you know what i mean that's a good question but for me to even i'm getting to that point yeah because from a from a business perspective yeah i had to build the business or let me take a few steps back mm -hmm. to get to that point of like how do we be ahead of the market we're selling to? Yeah. Your market needs to buy from you. For sure. So if I don't have product that they're going to buy, yeah. I can't even be ahead of right. them. First, you got to get their attention. Right. Yeah. You have to get their attention and, and know that this is something they could adopt. Right. A lot of people, they, they build a business trying to be ahead of someone with mm -hmm. product that the market doesn't even want. Right. The market doesn't even care for. So it doesn't matter what you what you do in content or or if you if you want to build an NFT or if right. you want to do something so in a, if your if your main product that sums up your business yeah. isn't being purchased, yeah. you don't have a business. You have nothing. <laughs> yeah. You just have a social media presence. Right. You, and that it took me 9 months. Right. To get to the point where I truly feel confident in our product. And when, when was that? I mean, I don't know if you can share anything. Like, sure. When you got to the nine-month process, how did you know? Like, okay, this is it. This is the one that I want to launch out. How, how did you feel the confidence? People were buying. Yeah. People so you were, were putting, you're putting out like little soft launches or different products? Everything. Social okay. media, in-person, pop-ups, online. Right. Who's buying? What are they saying when they see it? Right. Do I need to sell this to them? Right, because I come from the world where I need to pitch you my service. Yeah. Right. So I I pitched on stages. I pitched yeah. on on large events. I pitched on on Clubhouse. I I mean I've I pitched everywhere. Right. But I I, I didn't want to bring that because 
Every business is different. The apparel business is so different than the service business. I can't take 100% of what I know when it comes to services and apply it and implement it into apparel. It's not going to work. Right, totally different. Market. Because fashion yeah. isn't what's sold. It's what's purchased. Wow. Okay, can you explain that? So if I go and take all my product right. and I go to the streets yeah. and I try to pitch, them, pitch it to them, right. people are going to feel a certain type of way. Right. Because people don't want to be pitched on what they want to wear. That's true. Because clothes doesn't solve a problem. Right. And it's something usually like that they have to pick themselves. They it's personal. It. Right. It's personal. Because yeah. think about this. When was the last time you bought something that was, the purchase was made before you bought it? In, right. in other words. Like you already wanted it. You already had yeah, it. You had mind, the outfit in mind. Mentioned. You had the color yeah. in mind. Say you're going to an event or right. whatever. You already know what you want to buy. Right. So it's not, you, if I walk into the a shoe store, you can't pitch me on shoes, man. Right. I'm going there for a reason. Idea. You already have a vibe. You already have a style. It, right. True. I'm going there for a specific reason, specific color, specific feel. Because yeah. the customers I sell to, they know what they want. Right. So you got to know your customers. Now, if I, if my customer is the impulse buyer that maybe you got to walk and hold their hand, then yeah, for sure. But my customers know what they want. So I right. can't pitch them. Right. So... When I felt that turning point of, okay, this is the direction we're going to take, mm -hmm. is when people walk into this shop and they get excited about the concept. I don't even pitch them. I don't talk to them about it. When they walk in, they already know they're, they're trying to purchase from your brand. Yes and no, because we do have different brands in here. Mm -hmm. okay. But when someone sees it and they yeah. go, man, this is super dope. Like, I really, this concept right here. Yeah. I fuck with it, or right. excuse my language, but I rock with it, I vibe with yeah. it. That's when I knew, okay, I got something, we got something with the collection, the right. concepts we have. Yeah. And then when we go to pop-ups and people buy it without being pitched or Ooh. without being questioned, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So like, that's when you know you have a good business model.